everyone and welcome back to exceeding the crown if you don't know my name is Brittany joy and here on exceeding the crown we talk about life we talk about pageantry and we talk about platforms today i have a wonderful queen coming on for you guys and you already know it's going to be a great one so let's go well hello and how are you I'm great. How are you? I'm good. So do us a favor and introduce yourself. Tell us your name, your title, as well as where you are calling from. So my name is Melissa Schroeder. I am USA National Miss Cornhusker State, and I'm calling you from Omaha, Nebraska. Awesome. Omaha, Nebraska. You know, my best friend is from Nebraska, so I'm pretty sure you are a lovely person. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, let's get right into your on-stage question. And your on-stage question is, if you could have any personal mascot, what mascot would you choose? Ooh, okay. This is going to sound a little bit out of the box, but a bearded dragon. A you have to it's, explain why. So it's like... So they're like little lizards and when they get mad or have like any type of feeling other than like content, sometimes their um, beards will turn black. And I think it is so cool that they have the ability to just change like one specific portion of their bodies that and they're really nice and cuddly and they have like the biggest personalities for lizards. I actually have a pet one and he is like my little best friend. He follows me around the house like a dog. <laughs> Really? Yeah. A, a bearded okay. dragon. Yeah. A bearded dragon. I would one, I'm not really a reptile person. I'm not gonna lie to you. I've worked with before. Really? Yep, so what made you get, what made you get the bearded dragon? My parents gave me one when I was little, and after that one passed, they got me my own. And he's just been like my little best friend ever since. Wow. I would have never, never thought of a bearded dragon being like a little puppy dog. Wow. Okay. Well, let's move on to your pageant question. And your pageant question is, what is one portion of pageantry that you wish was not as overlooked? I want to say runway because... Mm -hmm. When you think of pageantry, you think of your on-stage question, the evening gown, and like your interview. Mm -hmm. And to me, runway is showing, this is my personality. This is where I'm gonna have the most fun strutting down that runway and really show the most personality of who I am. It's that little spark where you're just like, oh, hey, look at what they came up with to wear. Look at their style. This is, this is who they truly are. To me, oh. that's, that's the pop factor. Yeah, absolutely. I love, I love me a good runway. Run, whenever it's time to compete runway, I feel like that is, you're, you're right. That's the moment where you get to express yourself to the fullest. Um, it, it's about you, your personality, what you deem as fashionable and how you are able to slay it on stage. So I think that is wonderful. Absolutely. Runway. Okay. So let us know what is your platform and why is your platform important to you? My platform is disability. And this is my favorite part of talking about anything that I've ever accomplished in my life because it is so close to my heart because disability is all about focusing on the abilities of people with disabilities and educating them on their rights and helping them feel like they belong in society. Mm -hmm. And then taking their beliefs and educating people without disabilities of what we go through and what they can do to be a part of our movement. I love working with people with disabilities. I've done this since before I was even diagnosed with a disability myself. And when I was diagnosed and my health started declining, I realized how bad everything was. I was told horrible things. I was refused my rights. And it really opened my eyes to other people go through these things too. And they experience this type of adversity every single day. And I couldn't wish that on anyone. So I started building up this platform to help other people like me 
get what they deserve and feel like they belong. So when you say feel like they belong, um, what what is it that other people could do in order to help them feel like they belong, like they're not outcasted? I would say be friendly, give them opportunities to help out. Mm -hmm. Even if it's, oh, hey, can you pass me that thing over there? It gives them an opportunity to feel like they're needed, like they're not just a burden. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the time when a, someone with a disability is going through something, they're the person that no one looks to for help because they're like, oh, you're too busy or you're in a wheelchair, you can't stand up. Just because someone has a disability, meaning they're incapable of doing like one specific thing, it doesn't mean they don't have any abilities whatsoever. They are fully capable of going above and beyond and taking you by surprise. So how, how, how does one navigate that thin line between making sure that you're, you're including them and, um, and not being from the, like, so like if you're like, if I was at a store or something, how do I make sure that I am not um, crossing the line when it comes to what I ask? Or really, I, I feel as though like I'm being thoughtful and not um, asking this person to do something because obviously, you know, if, if, it if it's easier for me to do it, I feel like it maybe it's not it may be less thoughtful if I then ask somebody who it, it would take more time to do it, to get it done. And it's, you know, it's not me trying to make you feel outcasted. It's in my mind being thoughtful. So how do we know how to navigate that, you know, that little gray area? I think definitely taking into consideration the circumstances. If there is someone who is fully capable of standing up and reaching a high shelf, I'm not going to ask the person in the wheelchair because I don't know why they're in the wheelchair. But depending on the circumstance, if they're standing right next to something or sitting right next to something that you need to get to, instead of saying, hey, can you move? You can say, hey, can you pass that to me? Or even if you know someone who's disabled who may not get out as much as you do, perhaps invite them out, give them an opportunity to be social. Okay, awesome. Okay, and so how can other people really support your platform? What is it that other people can do to make sure that your platform is heard? So I actually have a specific Instagram at platform disability. This is where I post everything my platform related. And this is where I do most of my communicating with different organizations, people and support groups through by sharing our content, following, liking, and commenting, I'm able to connect with more people and network to have my platform be shared across the world. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on Exceeding the Crown and sharing your platform as well as your advice. But before we go, we always give our final advice. So what would be your final advice today? I would say get out there, have some fun. No matter who you are, you will have the ability to do anything you set your mind to. Don't let limitations stop you from exceeding. Exceed that crown. Awesome, so much. And thank you once again for coming on.